What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the semi-extreme one chunk series. In the last episode, I completed a majority of the port serum chunk, including 55 magic, 2 cast, high level alchemy, 51 smithing to make a mithril axe, and getting up to 72 fishing, obtaining the big bass and swordfish during the process. In this episode, the goal is to complete the chunk, with the biggest goal being to obtain the big shark. I'll put the rest of the task that I need to complete here on the screen, but before we get started, shout out to all my channel members who got to watch this video a few days early. Thank you for the further support you give me. Also, I have the goal of hitting 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. It's free and helps out the channel a lot, so if you aren't already, it would be greatly appreciated. I also do stream on Twitch every weekday, so make sure to check me out over there too if you don't mind spoilers. But let's go ahead and get started and thank you for watching. Starting the video off with level 73 fishing and here is an XP lamp. We're going to put that right into hunter and that should be a level 4 hunter. There it is. All right we're going to take a small break from fishing and do a little bit of cooking. I got a lot of swordfish and tuna that I'm going to cook. I'm only going to cook the tuna for now. I have 4700 tuna that I'm going to cook. Only cooking the tuna for now because I could end up burning swordfish and I still have a little bit of fishing to do so there will be more tuna that I'm able to cook by the time that I need to cook the swordfish to get to level 80 just to kind of minimize the amount of burnt swordfish that I do end up cooking. Also going to be drop cooking the tuna just like I did with the corn a couple episodes ago. Um, it's pretty easy to do and it is a lot faster than just regular cooking. But there is level 76 cooking. Okay, we're an hour into cooking and it looks like we're sitting at around 165k an hour. So not too shabby, not too shabby. Level 77. Thank you for the lamp. We'll put that right into Hunter. And there is a level 5 Hunter. Let's go. 78 cooking. All right, last five tuna in the bank to cook. Looks like it got us 470,000 experience. But now that the cooking is done for now, it looks like I will be going back to some fishing. And there is level 74 fishing. Oh, I didn't even realize it, but that is total level 800 as well. 75 fishing. And count check, I would like to thank you very much for this XP lamp. Gonna put that right into Hunter. And there is level 6 Hunter. And there is a level 76 fishing. I can now harpoon shark. Let's go to the bank, see how much tuna and swordfish I ended up catching and then we can go start our adventure on catching that big shark all right we got about 4700 cooked tuna 1500 raw tuna and just about 5400 raw swordfish as well so definitely a lot of food even before the uh, big shark grind comes so yeah so needless to say we're going to be sitting really good on food for the very foreseeable future and there is the first shark caught on the account that is a chunk task complete i'm so excited to see how many shark i'm going to end up getting at level 76 fishing we have a 12.5 percent chance to catch a shark so needless to say that it's going to be very good afk time very good for whenever i'm watching football or need to edit or whatever so i'm going to take advantage of this while i can and through the power of editing here we are at level 77 fishing getting about 11k experience an hour and I believe I have about 1100 shark in the bank right now. So definitely not a lot of interesting things happening while fishing. So we're just going to speed by these levels really quickly. Another XP lamp. Putting it right into hunter. And that is level 7 hunter. There we go. Alright, we got 2500 sharks. Which means I am officially halfway to the drop rate on the big shark. I am going to go watch some football. And I'm going to be on my phone. And I don't feel like getting a big shark on my phone. So I'm just going to cook the rest of the tuna and swordfish that I have right now. About 1500 raw tuna and 5400 raw swordfish that I'll have to go through. I don't think I'll get through all of them. But I'll definitely... Uh, be able to hit 80 with all those fish so i guess i'll see you when i get back from watching football and i am back i was able to cook up all the tuna got 6200 tuna and i still have 2300 raw swordfish that i need to cook up but i did end up cooking almost 3000 swordfish so that is pretty good only burned 21 swordfish so kind of happy about that didn't burn that many but i was able to get to 81 cooking so that means i officially have the level to go cook up shark so i'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick let's see if i burn the first one or not and i did not burn the first one that is cooking a shark that is a chunk task complete and uh really all now we got to do is just uh, catch that big shark level 78 fishing another xp lamp gonna put that right into hunter and that should be a level 8 hunter there we go 
Oh, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. The big old shark. Alrighty, boys. We are done. Let's go to the bank and let's see exactly how many I had to catch to get there. Oh my goodness. I know it was below 5,000. I know that for sure. And if we look here, it looks like it took me 3,903 sharks, so about 1,100 shark under the rate for the big shark. Not too bad at all. I did end up getting two big swordfish during the grind, but I didn't feel like mentioning it because after the first one, it's just kind of meh at that point. doesn't really matter. But we can go ahead and say the big shark is a task complete. The biggest grind of this chunk is out of the way, and now we just have a couple of diaries and quest steps that I need to do in order to finish out this chunk. This lines up perfect because today is my first Twitch stream and I wanted it to be a chunk roll stream so this honestly just lined up perfectly. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get the big shark in time but luck was on my side. All right one of the diary tasks I have to do is claim a security book from the security guard up here in the Port Sarum jail so you really just got to talk to him and he'll he'll just give you a book. Task complete. Pretty simple. The last diary task I have to complete is talking to this customs officer over in Musa Point and taking his boat over to Port Sarum. So that's uh, arguably even more simple than the other task I just did. So task complete, easy enough. Now we have a couple of quest steps to do. I'm gonna go ahead and do the pirate's treasure up to step one real quick. So it's probably just starting the quest to be honest. All right, the quest is started. All right, so the first step of the quest is gonna need me to go to Karamja. Oh, literally, literally do the diary test that I just did for the quest step. I guess I could have, <laughs> I should have done the quest step first, I guess, maybe, I don't know. Doesn't matter now, it's only 30 coins, so not a big deal. All right, and the next step of the quest is outside of my chunk, so that is this task done for now. We just have one more quest to do. I believe we have three parts of Skippy and the Mogers to do, and then we'll be uh, completed with this chunk. Forgot to mention it, but we did end up getting to level 78 fishing, almost level 79 fishing, uh, before we got that big shark. All right, Skippy, here is your bucket of water. You need to sober up. You're walking real funny right now. Okay, so I need to bring him some nettle tea. See, all right, I got my bowl, my bucket, my pestle mortar, the chocolate bar, and the leather gloves. Let's not drop them. Let's wear them. Yeah, you need, a, you need leather gloves to pick up nettles, otherwise it will just hurt you. See, pick up nettle. Yeah, I thought this was a milking cow, but apparently you can't milk a buffalo, which I, I mean makes sense. So I actually don't think I have any access to milk from shops or a dairy cow, so within my chunks. So I don't think I'll be able to do the next step. So I think the nettle tea is the only thing I'm able to do with this quest at the moment. But I can go ahead and make this nettle tea, use the nettles on the bowl of water, and then I can just go ahead and cook it. And now all I gotta do is give this to Skippy and I believe that will finish the chunk off. Now I knew this was up here, but I didn't think anything of it, but I got a comment in one of my videos saying that this Eclipse wine actually sells for quite a bit at general stores. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick one up and see how much they sell for general stores. And if it's viable, then this could actually be my new best money maker. All right, so if we take this to the general store, we can value them. They sell for 400. Wow. Yeah, I think that's my best money maker. Just world hop for Eclipse Wines. That's pretty good. Wow. Hey, Skippy, blah, blah, blah. Here is your nettle tea. All right, and uh, that is the task done. I cannot get the bucket of milk. I mean, everything that I've looked up suggests that I can't get the bucket of milk. But uh, if you guys know a way of me getting a bucket of milk uh, within these chunks right here, please let me know. I looked at everything I could and I didn't see anything. So I, I believe this is as far as I can go, but we can mark that chunk task down and that is chunk task complete and chunk complete. We are at 14 days and 23 hours. So pretty much 15 days play time. I've nearly doubled my play time since I rolled this chunk. It's been a lot of fishing, a lot of world hopping for the smithing XP. And uh, yeah, we got a total level of 812. Really good progress in this chunk, a lot of progress. But let's go ahead and get into the chunk picker and we can talk about chunks real quick. All right, gonna try to go through these quickly. I marked all the um, chunks that have something in them for me to do. Anything that's not marked is, it's pretty much nothing chunks. We can go ahead and start with number eight. That is a magic tree spawn, uh, scrawny face, just because it 
would be a long grind. Rallo's Rise gives me a good prayer method. Number one is a farming task, but farming is passive for me, so really not that big of a deal. Number four is really good. This gives me access to the bazaar which is Wealthy Citizens, which would be my new best money maker. It also gives me gem stalls for rubies, and it has a ring mold in there that I can buy. So that would come in really handy for a future smithing grind. Number five doesn't have any tasks for me, but there is a rune mace um, in a shop that I could buy. So that is actually pretty good. And I believe that is all for Varlamore. So let's go over to Port Serum and see what chunks we have available over there for us and talk about them. All right, so if we look at Port Serum, number nine is the Remington Mine. That is a happy face that is going to be my best mine it also gives me access to gold and ring molds it's a really good mine close to a bank deposit so i would really like this there's also a poh right there where i can unnote noted things number 10 has a farming patch but farming's passive there's also a yew tree over there and number 11 is Entrana. that is kind of dog poop that it gives us access to a furnace and would unlock 99 smithing so i really don't want that and if we go down south we have the king of all chunks this is the pest control chunk this would give me access to a really good bank close to an anvil there's also a archery shop in here i'd have to get 75 fletching to be able to make rune arrows but it would also mean that i am one chunk roll away from unlocking the pest control minigame which would unlock void armor and i think void armor on a chunk account would actually be really really good but i believe those are all the chunks worth talking about the only chunk i don't want is entrana because that is just a uh, that is just a whole can of worms right there but other than that i really wouldn't mind any other chunk honestly pray to god it's not in trying anything else is fine okay we take it we take that okay musa point take me there this is not going to give us any tasks though i believe oh okay we got a couple diary tasks and some quest tasks so i guess we can do those real quick so pick up five bananas then we got use the fishing spots north of the banana plantation and collect five seaweed from anywhere okay easy enough and then pirate treasure up to step three we gotta buy a rum and stash it and then return the run rum to frank let's go ahead and get these done real quick and we'll roll a new chunk Stupid me didn't record two of the tasks, but as you can see, I did catch the fish in the dock, and then I did pick up all the bananas for the task. Okay, yeah, it's updating now. One, two, three, four, and five. All right. Another Karamja easy diary done, so we just gotta... I think this is the last part of the quest that I need to do as well. Hey, you can't go back there. Can I have a job? You know, sure. You can go back there now. That's how boomers think we can't get we can get jobs nowadays. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, you don't work here. Well, well, can I? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> here is your Karamja rum. Thank you for the chest key. I'll go get that done. But that is in Verox, so I cannot do any more of this quest. Which means that was a fast and easy chunk for me. And we can go ahead and get rolling again. The only new chunk here is number 16. This is kind of a, that's kind of a big one. It has a fire cape in there, inferno cape. Inferno cape will definitely be backlogged. We'll have to get full obsidian too. 91 thieving, and there was also a furnace down there. So that would trigger the uh, 99 smithing as well. So uh, best of luck. Oh God. Anything but in Toronto. <laughs> No, you did this to me. I'll have you know that you did this to me. You did this to me. You're banned. <laughs> so after a poll in my Twitch chat, everyone decided that I should backlog 99 smithing for reasons I will get into in just a second, but I just want to go over the task that this chunk gives me. Since I have access to a furnace and charter ships, I am now able to do glass blowing. So that gives me a task of 87 crafting to make a Dorgishan light orb. And since I have means to train crafting now, I will also need 65 fletching to fletch diamond bolts since I will have the means to cut a diamond. Other than that, I have one diary task of taking a boat to Entrana. Considering I will be going over there to do crafting anyways, this is a freebie. Entrana does have a dungeon that has a greater demon in it, which has new best in slots for me being the Mithril Kite Shield, Rune Fullhelm, 
and adamant plate legs. But the only way out of the dungeon is an exit that takes me to the wilderness or a teleport. Since I don't have access to the wilderness chunk or a teleport within my chunks, these will be put on the backlog until I'm able to have a way out of the dungeon. Now that we got the task out of the way, I present you with part 2 of Meme Mass. Hello and welcome back to Meme Mouse, where I will be discussing the reasons of why 99 smithing is being put on the backlog for now. To get things started, I have access to one mine and one furnace. The mine being in Varlamore and the furnace being in Entrana. The only way to get back and forth from these two locations for me is through charter ships. Not a big deal until you consider the cost it takes to use them. For a round trip from Varlamore to Port Serum and back to Varlamore, it costs 6200 GP. Let's remember that number because we will have to use it later to find out how much GP it will cost in charter ship travels for 99 smithing. At the moment, I am level 51 smithing or 111,945 XP. The XP required for 99 smithing is 13,034,431 XP. So in total, I will need to get 12,922,486 XP to get 99 smithing. As we found out in the last segment of Meme Mouse, smithing and smelting and iron bar grants 37.5 XP. So to get to 99 smithing, I would need to smith and smelt 344,600 iron bars. But without rings of forging or superheating, the iron ore has a 50% chance when smelting the iron ore to either make the iron bar or to fail. Failing to make the iron bar gives no XP. This would mean I would need to mine 689,200 iron ore to make the 344,600 iron bars if I were to go exactly 50-50 on the successfully and failing to smelt the iron bars. My inventory for the trip to the furnace would be my cash stack to pay for the cost of the charter ships and 27 iron ore. So if I can bring 27 iron ore with me in one trip, we can deduct that it will take me 25,526 trips back and forth from Varlamore to Entrana to get to 99 smithing. So if we bring back the 6200 GP that it costs to do a round trip and multiplying it by the amount of trips needed, it would cost me 158,261,200 GP in travel costs to get to 99 smithing. I recently discovered my new best money maker is world hopping for Eclipse wines that sell for 400 GP at the general store. If we add that along the 270 GP I make from selling 5 wheel along bows for 270 GP, we can see that every world hop would generate me 670 GP. So to get to the amount of GP needed for 99 smithing, I would need to world hop 236,210 times picking up Eclipse Wines and another 236,210 times selling them to the general store, totaling the amount of world hops to 472,420. Not to mention the nearly 1.2 million Willow Longbows to go alongside with our 5 to 1 bow to wine selling ratio. With only this being put into account and not including the time it would take to mine the iron ore, the previous training method I had with the iron bar spawn trumps this method. With the iron bar spawn, I'd have to world hop about 45,000 more times, but without the need to mine the ore, make the money, and walk back and forth from the mines to the furnace. One last thing I want to note is that while selling to the general store, I could be picking up the iron bar spawn every world hop, which would decrease the amount of money and iron ore I would need to make, but it's very hard to actually calculate how much this would make a difference without plugging it into a program of some sort. Just know that the amount of GP and iron ore I would actually need would be less, but not enough to take this out of the meme grind category for me. I got some comments the last time I did a meme mass segment, and most of you enjoyed it, but a couple said that those methods weren't meme grinds, and what I say to you is this, everyone has their own definition of a meme grind. I am not Limpwort, I am not Verf, I am Foley, and I'm a semi-extreme for cases just like these to make exceptions whenever I feel they are needed. So with that being said, smithing will be backlogged until one of two things happen. I unlock a free bank or mine, free meaning access back and forth from the mine slash bank to the furnace without costing GP. The 87 crafting isn't backlogged in this way because I can do all the training by going from the Port Serum charter ship shop to the Entrana furnace and back at no cost besides the GP required to buy the buckets of sand and ash to make into molten glass. Thank you for tuning into Meme Mouse. I hope you all enjoyed it and until next time. And I think this is a good stopping point for the episode. We'll start the next video working on the new chunk goals of 87 crafting and 65 fletch 
watching. A bit on the shorter side for my typical video links, but if I went any longer, I would either end the video off in a weird spot or have it end up being a lot longer than what I would like it to be. A big grind is ahead of me and I hope to see you all there in the next video to witness it. Again, huge shout out to all my channel members. I appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget to subscribe if you are enjoying the videos if you haven't already. My name is Foley and thank you for watching. Until next time.